Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, as somebody that hosts three podcasts, this one, one with Citrix and one with Netgear, and edits 20 podcasts for my clients where they just go ahead and record their interviews and I edit and publish it for them and write tech articles, blog posts, business blogs, and not only my own columns, but for other people and businesses. I think it's fair to say I spin quite a few plates each week, or at least I thought I did. So before I pat myself on the back, when I read the backstory behind today's guest, It brought me crashing back down to earth because Brian Rue is the CEO of a company called Rollbar, but he co-founded two successful startups before the age of 30. He was responsible for growing the social gaming company Lola Apps to 100 million users worldwide, and he's now revolutionising the way that software bugs are detected and fixed for tech leaders like Twilio, Instacart and Adobe. And he founded his first tech company, Lolo Apps, while he was a student at Stanford University back in 2008. And it was after that that he left school to dedicate himself full time. So, wow, I can't compete with that. <laughs> but while he was at Lola Apps, Brian, along with his co-worker and eventual co-founder, Corey, they experienced a new reality. And that was that building software can be quick and painless. And in doing so, it allowed for quicker release cycles, leading to shorter times between an idea to users enjoying them. And overall, the ability to be more creative. And back in 2012, he was inspired to build something that would let every developer experience the magic of building software in that new way, all with the founding of Rollbar a company that has helped more than 5,000 customers and 23,000 paid users process more than 40 billion errors. Intrigued? Yeah, me too. So enough for me. Let's get Brian onto the podcast now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Well, hi, Neil. Thanks so much for having me today. My name is Brian Rue. I'm co-founder and CEO at Rollbar. Rollbar is a continuous code improvement platform. Uh, We enable developers to proactively discover, predict, and resolve errors with real-time AI-assisted workflows. It's all part of our mission to help developers build software quickly and painlessly. Uh, What brought me here, um, I grew up coding as a kid. I'm a Seattle native. Um, uh, Today, I I live in San Francisco with my wife. And when I'm not working on Rollbar, I love being outside. Love that. And I think we need to dig into your story a little bit deeper there because you are a CEO who co-founded two successful startups before the age of 30 and was responsible for growing the social gaming company Lola Apps to 100 million users worldwide, which is incredible on its own. But I've got to ask, what was it that put you on this path? Can you remember what it was that lit that spark inside of you and where that love of technology came from? Yeah, you know, it really began at the age of six. Um, my my dad's friend was uh, I was a developer in the Seattle uh, uh, Seattle t- tech industry at the time, and introduced me to BASIC, which is on the computer the computer that we that we had just got. I learned uh, how to build um, guess the number of games and, and simple things like that. And kind of from from that day on, I, I was I was hooked. Um, I, I've always had a love of using technology to build interesting things and to um, to change the world around me. Um, uh, through throughout high school, I built uh, various things with PHP and HTML and MySQL. Um, and then in college, I, I quickly got pulled into the tech community in the Bay Area. Uh, so at Stanford, and, and was fortunate enough to get introduced to um, to to a group working on applications on the Facebook platform. Facebook had just launched their, their platform in 2007, and at the beginning of 2008, I got with some friends, and we, we identified that there was an opportunity to, um, to to build a way for anyone to build their own, their own, own, own applications without code. So anyone could have an idea for a simple app, like a quiz app or a, a gifting app, and uh, we ended up building an application that, that would allow those those um um, uh, creative people to, to build what, what they wanted to build. And it really took off. Uh, within a few months, we had millions of users. It quickly grew to 100 million. And it was a really interesting experience. 
Um, for me, as as a as, as a developer, the, the the really formative part of that experience was being able to have an idea in the morning of, of a way to improve this thing that we were building, and by lunchtime be able to just release it and have it be used by millions of people. Um, and the, the 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 speed of that feedback and the speed of being able to go from idea to execution to results in the span of you know half a day is just so exhilarating and exciting. And from there, of course, you're now revolutionising the way software bugs are detected, and and indeed fixed for leaders such as Twilio, Instacart, and Adobe. And it's just so many big familiar names there. But can you tell me more about Rollbar and the kind of problems that you set out to solve from the outset? Yeah, so the founding idea behind Rollbar was to give every developer that experience that I had had, you know, in those early days at Low Apps, of being able to go from having an idea to using your keyboard to getting it out to users in, you know, as as little friction as possible. Um, and it was it's one thing to do that uh, for a, a Facebook application, but it's it's something quite different to do it for an important important uh, uh, business application. Um, so we set out to to. Uh, to, to give developers the, the, that superpower, the, the ability to um, have that direct connection between their brain and the keyboard and the user. Um, the, 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 the way that we do it is by um, uh, giving developers visibility, which allows them to make this shift from being reactive, where they're constantly getting peppered with distractions and they're never able to focus, never able to make forward progress, to one where they're proactive and they're in control and, and they have the visibility and, and, and they have the, um, the tools they need and, and, and that. The, the um, the process they need to be able to uh, stay focused and and to make make really great forward progress. I'm glad you mentioned the the reactive side of things there and the constancy of distractions because as an ex IT guy, I've earned my stripes firefighting and reacting to problems, and that's what attracted me to you guys. And I love what you what you're doing here and how you're proactively discovering, predicting, and remediating errors with real time AI assisted workflows. And I think for for years now, many businesses that were not paying enough attention to their code they ended up paying it paying uh, for it with unhappy developers and customers further on down the line and building up a big technical debt so i'm curious are you finding that there is that real thirst for change and, and preventing problems before they occur with continuous code improvement well absolutely i think there's a there's kind of a breaking point that we're coming to with um the, you know the way software has been built and and um and the way that and, and how important software has become uh, where um, you know we, we we've been building more and more important, interesting applications. Those uh, the way we the, the, as a side effect of that, those applications have become more and more complex. Um, and the, the the mindset that that we, we that that many developers have, have still been stuck in around um, you know, trying to be perfect and, and ending up um, being reactive when things inevitably aren't quite perfect. Um, I think we're coming to to a breaking point where that needs, needs to change. Um, the way we see it is that the, the way that developers should think about code is, is about an, a mindset of, of improvement, um, that rather than trying to be perfect, we want them to, to be able to be uh, constantly improving. And what that means is dealing with problems as they arise. Uh, it means that we, we expect problems to happen and we build processes and have tools um, uh, that enable us to work through those problems and improve as, as fast as possible. Here we are in a, in a new year with new opportunities. I'm curious, what do you think will be the biggest challenges for developers this year? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest challenge for, for developers is complexity. Um, code has become so important. Uh, you know, developers have been pushed to adopt new technologies. Uh, the scope of what they're expected to do it, it has increased. Um, and, and all of that comes um, at, at a cost of, of, of increased, uh, increased complexity. Um, so I think dealing with with you know the the, the reality of, of that complexity, the desire to move fast, with high quality, but also build more interesting and 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 power, 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 powerful powerful applications, um, dealing with that complexity, I think is the biggest challenge. And for anyone listening that's outside of the industry, can you tell me a bit more about why Rollbar's new AI assisted workflows are such a game changer for the industry right now? Yeah, so Rollbar's AI's workflows uh, really changed the way that developers can deal with um, the, uh, what is happening in their code in the wild. Um, so prior to Rollbar, uh, developers would learn about bugs through testing or because users found them or there were, there were, there were uh, issues discovered in customer support. And, you know, the, the, those are kind of like the, um, uh, having your user find find the issue is kind of the worst possible way. It's much better if the, if the developer learns ahead of time or if, or if the developer learns before the user even has to, has to report the issue. Rollbar's automation-grade grouping um, 
uh, is kind of the, the, the kernel of our technology, which allows us to understand what errors mean. And based on, uh, on our, our ability to do that, we're, we're able to power these, these, these workflows, uh, which enable developers to become proactive. And I'm curious, what kind of trends do you think we can expect to see in the industry this year? Is there, is there anything you're monitoring closely or anything that's caught your eye? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest trend this year is digital transformation. Um, our entire way of life is being transformed. Uh, it's been accelerated so much by COVID-19. As everything becomes software, the need for code will grow from being just a technical detail that developers deal with to a critical business concern. Um, you know, the modern business, your assets are customers, employees, data, and code. Um, and that means that improving code will start to become a, a business level priority. Um, second trend is that the number of developers in the world will continue to skyrocket. Um, you know, we've got the ingredients for that all in place. Uh, code is a business priority. There's massive demand. Uh, many people are looking for a new career in, in the wake of COVID-19. There's better training materials uh, with online learning than the, there's ever been before. Um, and coding continues to be, in, in my opinion, one of the highest leverage activities that anyone can do to, uh, to, to improve the world around them. Um, so, so I think we'll see a mass expansion in the population of developers uh, with people entering the industry from all directions. Uh, and I'm personally very excited for all the things that those developers will build. And is there anything else that's, that you're particularly excited about the year ahead? And is there anything you can share about the kind of thing that you're going to be focusing on this year? Yeah. So, you know, I'm excited for how our world will improve as, you know, um, as uh, so many things become powered by software and all those new developers uh, start using software to 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 to, to, to uh, using software to improve the world. Um, we at Rollbar are excited to play a role in, in supporting that and in how we can, we can support those developers by enabling them to be proactive, uh, to have an improvement mindset and uh, deal with the most fundamental, fundamental problem with their code, which is errors. Um, we're focused on helping developers be more, more proactive. Um, our role is, is to continuously improve our code um, and provide better solutions for developers to discover, resolve and predict the obstacles that are in their way. And if there's anybody listening that would just like to find a little bit more information on the work that you're doing here, what's the best way to best way to find you online and also contact your team if they do have any questions? Yeah, so your listeners can go to rollbar.com uh, to learn more about Rollbar and our continuous code improvement platform. Um, there is a, a great free trial, which is the best way to um, to start um, learning about how Rollbar can, can help developers uh, uh, to, to improve their code. Um, we're also growing really, really quickly with hiring. I'd love to invite your listeners to uh, uh, to consider joining us in our mission to help developers with software quickly and painlessly. Fantastic. Well, there's so much cool stuff that you're doing here. I'm really interested in how the industry evolves and how you react to it and how people embrace to the Rollbar's new AI-assisted workflows. Incredibly cool what you're doing there. But more than anything, just thanks for joining me today and sharing your story with me. Thanks for having me today, Neil. So a big thank you to Brian for taking the time to come on here and share why he founded Rollbar, what kind of problems he was trying to solve for developers, and how most businesses aren't paying enough attention to their code and are actually ending up paying for it with unhappy developers and customers. And also for exploring why Rollbar's new AI-assisted workflows powered by automation-grade grouping is such a game-changer for the industry. And finally, of course, exploring the biggest challenges for developers and what trends we can expect to see in the future. But over to you. Do you have a story to share or question to ask? Whatever it is, email me now, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Get me on Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, at Neil C. Hughes. And my website is techblogwriter.co.uk. So I cordially invite you to join me again tomorrow where we'll do it all again. But whoever you are and wherever you're listening in the world, I appreciate you stopping by. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.